Welcome everyone, Star Flag Media. My name is Anthony, along here with my partner. Kyle, uh, 860. No, no Diddy. Uh, no Diddy. No Diddy. Diddy. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys for joining us this week. Um, wanna, before we get started, special shout out to both Sergeant America and Cyclone 07 for purchasing our, uh, our, our drunken coffees. idiot juice. <laughs> drunken idiot juice. Our, our beer for the for the next following weeks you're gonna see beers and it's gonna be thanks to those two guys who donated to the channel buy me a coffee you can visit the link bmc dot link slash star flag media if you want to buy us a coffee um uh before we get started uh this week i want to also say we have crossed another threshold um i didn't want to make a special video but this is going to count as that and we have over 1,000 subscribers. Um, our mission has always been to get over 100 by the end of the year. And after our WrestleMania live watch along, we've crossed the 1,000 subscriber mark. And thanks to everybody who subbed. Yeah, man. Shout out to y'all, man. We love y'all. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, uh, we appreciate it. And um, also, I'm adding a new playlist to the Star Flag Media, the media portion of our channel. We're going to have a movies playlist where we're going to feature live well not live but full length movies uh feature films from across you know the classics yeah which is great because i mean i know me i like to sleep with the tv on so i could just yeah if you want to catch some classics like you know night of the living dead or gulliver's travels or you know some classics in there like uh the original i am legend we've yeah. got that playing right now on our channel check out the playlist for full length movies um and yeah so um shout out to all those uh occurrences all of that happened within a week man it's been a crazy week for star flag media um so we want to thank everybody out there for for supporting the channel we're, and yeah. we're on our way we're on our way grateful and thankful thank you so much a absolutely uh so this week we've had a couple of, of big things happen man before we get to our list there was a w to wtf moment <sighs> big time well, moments for the x-men show yeah. So, well, first, the Invin Invincible is finally done for this season. Oh, oh you okay? You watched yeah, that episode. Yeah. All Invincible right. is finished. Let's, let's, let's um, hear it. Uh, I think it ended on uh, lackluster for me. For me personally, I miss my wife. Yeah, <laughs> I miss my wife. And so Omega Man <laughs> is probably gonna come back, which we all knew was gonna happen. But um, uh, I'm interested to see what happens with Alan. If you guys know what what Alan, who Alan is, yep. um, it seems like Alan is probably more powerful than we thought he was. Mm -hmm. um, he kind of gave toy him he toyed with he toyed with with the super race, yep. and um, yep. the Vitreons or whatever they're called. They gave him the the all my Dragon Ball Z fans out there. They gave him the. Uh, the same power up uh once you get beat to near death he didn't, and he didn't even know back, it you come back even stronger he took a beating it was like wait that didn't even hurt and uh <laughs> yeah and now he, he came back and now he's like all super jacked and yeah and, and he and could and take swole. it and he was like oh, i'm gonna try to get a hold of omega man <clears throat> and anyway um it was still a great omni show man. omni man sorry <laughs> i keep saying omega man but, and the reason he's i got the the Omega on his chest. Yes, but I'm also thinking of Omega, uh, Omega Man in uh, I Am Legend because mm -hmm. we've got that playing in the playlist. And Omega Man is the other name of the uh, other version of that movie. Anyway, Omni Man is coming back. Um, Invincible, great show, great second season. Um, hopefully, they don't take two years to make the third. Um, but yeah, it ended on a lackluster. Eh, kind of a cliffhanger but i'm interested i'm still in i'm still all in for the third season um but let's be real what was this week about well before we jump off that pause no diddy i think that the second season was trying to really develop mark um yeah it's the fact story. that he had the spoilers but he killed someone yeah he finally gets um, to, to have character development but but i mean we know what's we know what's going to to be expected. Um, the Viltrumites are going to come to try to conquer. I will Earth. say this: I was right about um, the alternate universes. Yeah, I was right about that. Um, we're going to have the Viltrumites come, and Mark. We already seen him fight Viltrumites twice. Yeah, and if he wants to, you know, save Earth, he's going to mm -hmm. have to kill. So 
and he's done it once. And so he's just done it, yeah. So we're gonna see if he has to do it again. It's gonna be good. It's it's good character development. Great show. Um, we're we're all in for season three. Hopefully, it won't take a year and a half. And they've been working on it. So yeah, but but the real bombshell of the week. X Men. X Men ninety seven. But, um, I mean, we got our boy Cyclops here with uh, with uh, uh, Executioner yeah. um, front and center. This week's X Men episode. So let's really quickly recap. Last week's X Men episode was a was a filler episode with Jubilee, and um, they they called it the Motendo episode with my least favorite villain. Um, and it was just filler. It was cute. It was like a sixteen bit throwback video game inspired Super Nintendo episode. Um, and Jubilee got an episode great. It was everything I expected from a Jubilee episode. They didn't make her any cooler. Yeah, it was it was boring. It was bubblegum pop and Jubilee. I was on my if phone the whole time. If you're a Jubilee fan, I'm sure you enjoyed it. But me personally, I would have thought that I was hoping they were going to make her cool like they did Cyclops. That didn't happen. Nope. Um, however, they've made up for that with this week's episode. It started off. Uh, bubbly and cheery as a regular x-men episode would it, it reminded me of the first time i watched the black panther movie and we're going to wakanda mm -hmm. but in this case we're going to genosha the right Mutant because they're Island. becoming part of the united nations yes. and um seeing them seeing the signs uh Magneto was right, and mutants love the X Men, and then you got the statue of Magneto and Xavier together, yeah, side by side, right, welcoming the mutants, and um, it's their paradise. It's 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 their paradise, and yeah, and they it show this like really one. funky character with like a jello skin and his eyeballs. They made sure to make make sure they made sure to put him in like four scenes. Yeah, um, the. <laughs> So like, like all the weirdest looking people or weirdest looking mutants, they're all accepted. That's what they were really going for. Yeah. Wanted to make sure you knew. Yeah, I seen that. And um, yeah, it looked it it looked like a paradise to me. I mean It looked cool. Um If I was a mutant, that's where I'd want to be. I get those happy images whenever I go to Latin America. And when you go to Atlanta. Nah, I ain't, I ain't not, not Atlanta. You loved Atlanta. So, I loved that land. We digress. Was we digress. Years ago. We, we digress. Um, but quickly, uh, the episode shifts a little bit, and we get some imagery of uh, Jean Grey having a little bit of a love quarrel with Cyclops. Uh, Jean Grey decides to pop into Cyclops' brain because you know they've been intimate with um, Madeline Pryor. Yeah, but before that, I mean that that was a psychic link that they talked about was that. That only Gene and Cyclops would share this mental, you know, she opened up the side of his brain so that they can share this, this psychic vibe with each other. Jean Grey did. And so she decides to, to do a little pop in on his brain cells to see how he's doing. And, and who's, in, who's in Cyclops' brain at that time? His baby mama. His, that's just my baby daddy. And oh my God, Gene loses her shit. She is upset because now Cyclops she is. Be. Well, I don't know. I'm gonna tell. You, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. I understand. I understand because we're we're not. On the, but this would be the equivalent in my brain of like your girlfriend smacking you in the middle of the night because she dreamt that you were cheating on her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I I went through that plenty of times. Um, this would be the equivalent of like it wasn't yeah. Even oh, a dream sometimes. Yeah. It, <laughs> sometimes you just wake up and somebody's trying to lock your phone with your finger. So, or they already in your phone, yeah, things like that. But, um, she basically jumped into Cyclops' brain and saw that he was actually doing the same psychic link with the clone, his ex, his ex wife, his, his baby mother. And uh, Jean loses her crap. She finally she breaks down and tries to say, How long has this been going on? and he tries to tell her, he Like, says listen, a month. <laughs> that's the <a> wrong answer. <laughs> he tells her the truth. Um, he could have <laughs> just said, This happened just now. Anyway, um, <laughs> and you know, then she gives him the the do you love me or do you love her? And he tells her, "That's just my baby mama." What do you mean? Yeah, I love you both. I love you both, oh, which is also the wrong answer. And um, because at the end of the day, Jean Grey's a, a woman, and she wants hey, to guys. Hear I'm giving out a course on how to uh, 
talk your way through those type of situations. So yeah, visit um, him on his channel, Talents Eight Six Zero or UWA yeah, Talents One. Yeah, leave a comment um, if you uh, if you're interested <laughs> on his channel, and uh, <laughs> don't make this channel that hot. <laughs> He'll get back to you. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so Jean runs away crying because, you know, she's hurt and all that. And then she has a moment with Wolverine. Logan is with her and and she confides in Logan and she's and she has this this little moment where she's like, you know who loves me unconditionally? Logan. Logan loves me more than Scott loves me. I'm not saying more, but I'm going to say Logan loves me as much as Scott loves me yeah. and it's unconditional. So what does she do? Jean Grey, the real Jean Grey, leans in and she kisses Wolverine. Wolverine and her have a moment. Mm -hmm. And what does Wolverine do? Well, he had a little hand slip. No. He said. Hand slip? He, he said, wishes. He said, nah. You're for him. You don't love me. Wolverine becomes the biggest cuck. In the whole X Men universe, he says, "No, Jean, you gotta go with the Boy Scout. You're Jean Grey, and he's Scott Summers, and that's the way it's gotta be." And that's my Wolverine impression. And there's um, two people that need to sign up for my course. Wolverine definitely gotta sign up. Um, but you know, last episode, and I'm digressing. Two episodes ago, when we found out that Madeline Pryor is is Jean's clone, I said, "Hey, Wolverine, go with the clone." Um, it's the next best thing to Jean. She is Jean. Um, but no. Instead, we get uh Jean Grey finally gives him an opportunity, and Wolverine talks himself out of it. So Wolverine um pushes her back to the guy who just broke her heart. Wow, amazing, you dumbass. Wolverine. Uh, so Jean, as she goes into the psychic thing, she she sees blood coming out of her nose, and Madeline Pryor gets blood coming out of her nose. And this is my first cue to go. Something a little weird. It's usually not blood in the X Men episodes, but we we digress and we move forward. What happens next, man? Um, what happens next is we get Magneto and the I I presume it's the Hellfire Club, and they're trying to come up with a reason for why Magneto should be the leader of the Genosha Nation, right? And you know, Magneto being the uh, Politician. The debonair person that he is, he's like <laughs> I know what I'm gonna do. He's thinking selfishly and he's like, Listen, I only do it if I got rogue as No, he said an X Men. He said if I only do it if I got an X Men, you know, as 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 a as a co partner or But whatever. we know which X Men he wanted. <laughs> and then he presents Rogue, like you just said, with the opportunity to be his queen. Yeah. And Rogue thinks about it hardcore. And she goes to Gambit and she talks about it. And then Gambit finally... Um, he snaps out. Stops dropping his cards after watching her walk out of the office. And decides, you know what, Rogue? If you do love Magneto that much and you have this physical connection, fine. He dropped the card. And the first, in the first episode, yeah. yeah no, yeah. no, he dropped the card this episode. Okay, again? Okay, well. Queen of Hearts. Ah, okay. As he walked away. So he's still kind of a little bit of a cuck. So... Um, but he does friend zone her. He does friend zone her. He gives her the the okay. He took his power back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because as as much as he wants to be with the broad, um, I'm I, you're you're choosing Magneto over me, so that's fine. We're gonna be friends, and everything that comes along with being just friends. But what really you know cool about that was that Gambit in the original series was never really a part of the X Men. He was kind of like um, he was a rogue member. And this kind of cemented him to me as like, okay, no, he's a he's part here. of the group. Yeah, he's a part of the group no matter what. Because even after Rogue does this, he's still there. Mm -hmm. So um, he lets her go, and Rogue decides she wants to try to see if she can rekindle uh, her romance with Magneto. And they go to she, the big ball, and she, she comes shows out flying up. out. Amazing looking, with a, you know, her outfit. Yep, yeah, and... um. Yeah, she comes out flying out, you know. Um, she's dressed to impress. Magneto mm -hmm. uh is like mid interview, sees her and they do the whole they do the whole trope and he just flies off and then they <laughs> dance. Yeah, they have a moment. They have a moment. 
And then, uh, boom, we see Cable. Out of nowhere. And Cable is like, stop the music. It's about to happen. Stop the music. And he bumps into Jean, who Jean looks in his eyes and recognizes him. She's like, who are you? And, you know, realizes, oh, my God, you survived. It's Nathan. So that's her son. It's it's Cyclops. Well, not her son, but Madeline Pryor is Cyclops' son. Yep. He survived um, when Bishop took him into the future. So Cable is looking, and he goes, oh, my God, I'm too late, and immediately backs off and leaves. But it's cool to see Cable, man. Cable is a cool character. So we, we always got Bishop, but now we get Cable. Yep. Like, this is cool. So Cable leaves. And what happens next, Chris? What happens um, next? Yeah, man, all all hell breaks loose. Literally. And um, you know, a lot of there was a lot of bodies getting caught. Um, a lot of mutants was going crazy. They I don't know who makes the song, but <clears throat> they could have damn near played Let the Bodies Hit the Floor. Yeah. Let the bodies hit the floor. Cause it was crazy. A lot of motherfuckers was nying. Pause. And I, I don't mean pause in a pause way, but I just mean pause for one second. When you mentioned music, um, 90s fans out there, there's a moment where, where Rogue and Magneto are flying around oh, doing yeah, their yeah, trope. Yeah, 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 and yeah. there's a very Ace of Base yep. style X-Men song going on. And I was like, they whoever composed that, <laughs> they knew what they were doing. It was definitely an Ace of Base style. 90s fans, pop music, it was perfect. Um, but yeah, so all hell breaks loose. All of that to say, all hell breaks loose, and this every everybody's explosions start happening. Yeah. Nobody knows what's going on. Um, Magneto is like, "What? What's happening?" And then they realize there's this giant planet, asteroid size sentinel with three heads. Who produces the giant sentinels, <laughs> the the regular sentinels that we've been used to? This thing pops those things out yep. <laughs> into the planet and into Genosha, and those things are killing left and right. But anytime you get near like the boss, it yep. wipes out city blocks with its vision. Now, mind you, this is a planet full of mutants. It's a city. It's a it's a, it's it's a, a continent full of mutants, all of them with varying degrees of powers, and they are getting smoked. They're getting smoked. Um, so the majority of the X Men are still on Earth, and well, Gambit. They're, they're all on Earth. <coughs> yeah, but X Men. I mean, Gambit's up there. Rogue is up there. They're not. They're on an island. Yeah, yeah, but but Genosha is like in space. No, it's not. Isn't it? No, it's part of the UN. Cause it's, yeah, I know, it's, but I think it's, it's in space. It's not in space. It's in Earth. It's on I, Earth. I thought it's an asteroid in space. No, that's asteroid M that you're mm. confusing. Okay, maybe. I'm, I might be confusing that. And it's also... Asphalt racing. And also Apex cheers Legends. to everybody. That's right. So all of that to say... <laughs> to all, all of that to say, this thing is wiping everybody it's, out. It's, yeah, they're, they're going crazy. And, but the um, X-Men are back at the mansion. Yeah, so they're at the mansion and they're watching live on the news. They're getting current, yeah, that's or right. you know, anyway. current updates. And yeah. um, it sucks because, like you just mentioned, I didn't think about that. Like this, everyone's a mutant. Like how they just couldn't just overcome, but they get wiped out. You got people like Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler makes a great debut. Um. People like Nightcrawler is back and, and he's, saving people he's left and saving right. Saving people left and right. Um, Gambit was also saving people left and right. Um, it's chaos. It's it's yeah. It's like a. I mean, I wasn't there, but I you know I we seen saw it on the news, but it was probably like a nine <laughs> eleven moment for them. No, it was absolutely that. Probably um, worse. It was crazy because the attack never stopped. Yeah, and. Um, once Magneto, Rogue, and Gambit, once they all realize up, what's going on, it's coordinate. Yeah, they they Magneto had a plan. He um, said Rogue. Well, they they really weren't even planning on going to attack this thing. They realized the Morlocks were stuck in the middle of the city, and Magneto made a promise to the toad like Morlock. I forget his the name. Green one. Um, yeah. Yeah. Put put his name in Who the also comments. Has powers like Rogue. And yes, who's a cool character. Um, 
And he made him a promise that he would never have to be scared again. Mm -hmm. And so Magneto said, I made a promise. And he's, as the leader of the X-Men says, Rogue, you clear the way, Gambit, and you are going to go save the Morlocks. And just those two X-Men, and, and Magneto's doing his thing too, are whooping ass the whole way. They are messing Sentinels up left and right to get to the center where this giant mega... Uh, gigantic. It's a, it's a it's a giant uh, three headed it's, sentinel thing that beyond scope. Yeah, it's, it's 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 ridiculous. And um um, once Magneto goes to like you know like save that mutant, the green one, the Morlocks. Um, they recognize Magneto as a Omega. What is it? Omni level threat. What is it? What's the term in in that show? That's about um, it. Yeah, it's it's the highest le level. Too. And uh, but they also, I think they scan not just him. They scan the, the um Gambit and and Rogue as well. And they're like, these are the ones that we gotta worry about. They're like the highest level. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So, but what ended up happening was they. I I remember they scanned mm -hmm, Magneto, Magneto mm -hmm. and they was just he was, it was going all out. Omega so, level threat. Blah 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 blah. Get rid of, get yeah. rid of Magneto. And uh, you know, this Rogue, thing goes in. Rogue had a a moment, and Magneto held it back. And yeah, Gambit, well, because they well, they saved the Morlocks, they saved the Morlocks, and Magneto puts a force field around the, all of them. And Rogue is trying to be Rogue, and she's like, "I can save all of you," but she can't without killing herself. And Magneto knows this, so he suppresses her and Gambit. He puts, you know, his magnetic locks and he's putting his force field all at the same time. And they're sharing a, a look. Mm -hmm. And Rogue is looking at him like, let me help. And he's looking at her like, if you help, you're dead. He knows what's going on. And he is taking damage. And he is taking hits from this giant thing. And his force field doesn't look like it's going to hold up very much longer. And Rogue has a moment where she's like, F it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help anyway. And Gambit has a cool, it's my turn. And as soon as Gambit is like, I right, mon ami, oh, I'm going to do my thing. He gets stabbed in the ribs. Spoiler alert. And pulled up by the giant sentinel. And Magneto looks. And Rogue looks. And Gambit has almost like, this crooked smile on his face because it looks at the thing and that that's when i think that's when um the the sentinel says omega threat neutralized when it looked at him because he feel he, it figured gambit's dead and gambit says i think you're drunk <laughs> no 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 I, I believe it says that i believe it says that so what happened was <laughs> I am drunk. What happened was I downed this whole glass. What happened was yeah, yeah. Please uh, go on. Magneto had the force field, and he yes. was trying to save everyone, and they recognized them. Omega yes. threat. They gave Magneto all they could get, and spoiler alert: Magneto doesn't make it. He doesn't. He doesn't survive. Yeah, but that happens after. No, that happened before. So what happened was that's when Rogue, once Rogue realized that Magneto was gone, she goes. Berserk, and um, yeah, well, I don't know. she I grabs remember. the motor. She she flies right at him. Gambit goes, no hell no, you about to die, and um, he throws like a, a, a giant motorcycle at her. And he throws the motorcycle at her and gets out, gets her out because the way. she's about to die. But yeah, she is about her. to die. He yeah, saves yeah, yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, she's about to die. And he charges. All this it. is correct. He charges. He's the, less drunk than me. He charges the <laughs> the gigantic sentinel whatever you want to call it there's so, a name for it so he charges it and um he you know he doing his little vases move because he's gambit and he's, he's cool the, ch, 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 you know you know that you know the animation he doing and gambit's badass and and gambit's always been badass he's doing the flips and everything he's dodging yeah and then right when he's about to go for the lethal blow uh -uh. Bow, uh -uh. that's the ribs right to the ribs and um 
So the the moment that you were confusing was Omega, think... Omega level threat dead was neutralized was okay. was was for Magneto. I, yeah, okay, maybe which yeah, sparked yeah, yeah. the whole that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, yeah. scene. Okay, sure. All that all that happened. All of that happened. All that happened. So then, but what they the didn't, back, what they, yeah, exactly. What they didn't realize this thing to the ribs, and we thinking like, oh, it's fuck. A, it's Dover. We just lost Magneto, and they just killed Gambit. But then Gambit, Gambit turns out to be the Omega level threat that they didn't expect because he showed that thing what his true powers were and something that Gambit has always held back is what the amount the levels of the amount that he can charge up with his power and make explode and the size of that sentinel it was huge pause was gigantic and when he lets his charge go through into the vine that stabbed them into the sentinel the it, whole thing lit up that half a genosha lit up and don't forget he stabbed in his ribs yeah so his whole body is so his, his body is, is it it's gotta be, everything it gotta be uh he gave it he gave it everything <laughs> he knew he was done yeah so if i'm gonna go i'm taking everything with me and it was like dropping a nuke. It was like watching Hiroshima go off. And Genosha is toast. Everybody that was already in that vicinity was probably already dead due to that Sentinel. Because if Gambit didn't do what he did, that thing would have finished the entire Genosha. It would have finished probably all of mutants off. And Gambit had to do that. When you are with me, I'm free. I'm faithful. I believe. I just know that from wrestling, man. But that would have been sacrifice. That would have been the perfect song to go along with. We that. might we will remix my hey, anybody out there got some 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 editing skills. Do the gambit scene and put my sacrifice by Creed. Holy crap. I've watched so many videos of people and, and on TikTok, especially crying, um, mostly girls, but people who are fans of X-Men 97 watching what happened in X-Men 97 was on the level of what we've been talking about with Invincible. Yes. It's up there. I agree. If we have to, I know you're probably agreeing with me with this one. The best X-Men episode ever. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's gonna be hard to top this. They gotta. So I think if they gave this, if they gave us that now, yeah, then I think that the season finale, finale is gonna be. If if not, we know we got two seasons for sure. If not as good, wow. it'd be just as good. Because man, better. man, this. This could have been the season finale. They showed their Holy writing cow. chops it on this is, episode. And the guy who wrote it is no longer at Disney. But holy crap. Yeah, they, they showed uh um one of my holdbacks from X-Men was uh the fact that they the stakes aren't really there. Yeah. So, we always know at the end of the episode. The X Men win. Yeah, the X Men. Yeah, they're always gonna win, and they're gonna, you know, good beats bad. <laughs> not but, today, but not this episode. <sighs> and uh, I think you mentioned it before. It re what did the, you said? What did you say? It reminds me of the Avengers the, when Infinity War happened. Yeah. Um. When when Thanos says to Thor, and we talked about this before we rolled the cameras, you should have gone for the head. Pause. To Thor, and he snaps his fingers. And gets rid of everyone. It was that moment where you're like, "Oh and my the movie god!" Ends and the, episode and the ends. movie is over, and you had to wait a year for the next for the next Avengers movie. So we this was that. So once Gambit destroys the Mega Sentinel, yeah, um, it's you a good get, name for it. If it's not it, I like it. You get you have Rogue who's still like in her tattered up dress, no gloves, no. No protection with her skin, and she grabs and she's, Gambit. She's cradling and holding Gambit, who's 
who's dead and she's like yo i can't feel you and she's sugar crying. i can't feel you love i can't feel you and uh, oh and oh it was it just made it and she's touching gambit <clears throat> which we know yeah for the last 40 years or 30 years or whatever the first x-men 97 93 when the x-men originally debuted here we are 30 years later yep. she's never touched gambit and the first time she touches him he's dead yep i can't feel you and and rogue is crying and that's when the credits roll yep. holy so, cow yeah man. it was it was a great episode and um i give it a 10 out of 10. I will say so as well. And, I agree. Um, I agree. I think, well, for me, this episode uh, mm -hmm. only just solidifies what I want as a adult <laughs> X Men fan. Yeah, I just I want to see I want to see good writing. I want to see good storytelling, and they kind of showed me that they, they they got it. They got it, and they could they can do it. They can deliver, and I hope they uh, they keep it up. I'm okay with the woke stuff that's coming down the line if all the writing is going to be like this. I'm okay with it. Well, that, that stuff that we were talking about a few episodes back with Morph and all of that. If the writing is going to be like this, man, holy crap. Disney Plus, you got me. You got me, X-Men 97. Um, I said we got a Cyclops and Executioner over here. You, you might catch me buying a few more uh, uh, classics from Hasbro. Um, I will say this. Um, I'm going to change the M on Magneto's suit. No longer Maricon. It is now Muerto. Um, <laughs> um, you know, predictions, you know, is going to be that uh, Cable is going to fix everything. But we don't know yet. I'm excited for next week. Yeah, same here. I'm excited. So that was our X Men '97 review for the last two weeks, um, and thank you guys, of course, for sticking with us. Now, of course, I know what you guys are all here for it is our most popular section of our uh, podcast, which is our list. So our top five list this week is going to be the hardest game games that you've played of all time. They don't necessarily have to be retro. Um, but they're probably going to be retro in yeah, our experience it's, it's probably, it, mine's is, because we've been gaming for a long time. Mine's is childhood. A lot so, of, a lot of, I'm going to say 90% of mine is childhood. Okay. Um, with that said, uh, our top five and honorable mention hardest games of all time. Do you want to go first or should I? Yeah, I go first. All right. Number five. Um, so caliber, man. Uh, I love fighting games. Great game. Um, but Soul Calibur in particular, um, I never forget. I used to play it on the arcade cabinet. Yeah. Um, and and I, I might be confusing or mixing this with Soul Edge, but I remember Soul Edge was a dollar, and I think Soul Calibur was fifty cents. Either way, it was. It He's was, swapping that. He's it was a lot. That. Yeah, yeah. Soul um, Edge came first, so probably fifty cents. Huh. Soul Edge came first. So Soul yeah, Edge yeah. was a dollar. And then and Soul, Soul Calibur, Calibur was, was less? At at Burger and Pizza Land, Soul Okay, fair enough. At Burger and Pizza Land. So the one that came cent. Okay, fair enough. But I remember playing a dollar for Soul, Soul Edge. Edge. And, okay. Um Damn. So for a fighting game, guys, yep, in the nineties. Yep. Um so it's expensive. So what made it? So yeah, it 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 was. I used to ask my mom, "Got to get some chips." I go to the store, and yeah. I used to take that money and just pocket it, and then for a couple to, of days to play and then PlayStation. So I could play uh, Soul Edge. Soul Edge. Okay. So um, but the common theme with my pick is there's a returning character that I just I just hate, and, and that is uh, I think his name is Volvo. Oh, and he. <laughs> classic he's been in every one of them yeah the the crab walking dude Volvo, bro, I, absolutely like, i like ivy like i so ivy ivy ain't shit i like see me on dreamcast ivy ain't shit i i was I never scared you. of i was never scared of ivy yeah, be but scared of i was me. always scared of a Volvo character or Volvo player um i dare and you i was good I dare with you. rock i was good with uh siegfried not, it was his name. I think his name was Siegfried. Siegfried, yeah. Mitsurugi. 
And then so I'm, many good characters, uh, man. So Maxi, Caliber, the Soul series for yeah. fighting games, underrated. Maxi, Khalid, Maxi, great with the nunchucks. Khalid with the stick. So yeah, fear. Khalid. But like, so it was with the, just with always the size. a problem with with uh, Volvo. With Volvo, and um, if I'm not, maybe he wasn't like the main. Maybe he wasn't the bad guy, but. He was, he uh, but he's cool. The bad guy had like a different, but, but yeah, but he's cool. When you're paying, when you're paying <laughs> a dollar, when, yeah, when you're paying to climb the ladder and climb that tree to beat the game, and here comes Volvo. I didn't want Volvo on round, you know, level eight. <laughs> you wanted, I wanted him in the beginning. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, uh, so Edge, so Edge for you. Yeah. All right. So, previous weeks we talked about this game. And I'm going to mention it again. This is the Nintendo Sega Namco Triforce. And I'm going to talk about F-Zero GX for the GameCube and F-Zero X, I believe, for the arcade. Made by Namco and Sega. One of the hardest racing games I've ever played on the GameCube era. Um, also, one of the most beautiful games I played for that generation. 60 frames per second in 2001 or whenever it came out in that era on a GameCube. The arcade version, again, made by Namco, was 60 frames per second. The Sega version made for GameCube, 60 frames per second, 480p. You needed special component cables to view it in what they called at that time as, I think it was advanced definition, not high definition. Okay. But um, before we had like um, you know, high definition. Yeah. So it was 480p. Everything else at the time was 480i, and you needed the special GameCube component cables. But not not just visually. The game was visually impressive, and it still is at this time. The game was hard as hell. Um, but one of those few games that I like racing games. I know you do too. Mm-hmm. Um, it was one of those games where I never really made it past like the first cup. And I was okay with just being bad at the game okay. because it looked that great. And I was just not, it was a me problem and not a game problem. I know that there are people out there who are better than me at racing games who beat F-Zero EGX. I'm not one of them, but that's my number five pick. Okay. That's great. Yeah. <clears throat> um. So sp- speaking of me problems. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number Here we four go. <laughs> is Majora, Majora's Mask. Okay. That's a good pick. I wasn't expecting that. Majora's um, Mask. The moon falls every three days. Yeah. And, you know, you got to get into that repetition in the pattern of what you got to do and yeah. get it done before the moon ends. Right. Um, I got a lot of help. And I still didn't beat the game. <laughs> it's hard. Um, I got stuck a lot of places, and I got a lot of help. And then yeah. once it clicked, I was like, "Oh, it's clicking! I got it!" And Makes then sense. Next puzzle, and it's like pause. Man, stuck listen, again. Um, if for me, if they were to remake a Majora's Mask in HD or whatever, mm-hmm. um. There's been a couple of re-releases by Nintendo with Majora's Mask. Has but there? Yeah, for 3DS and all and nah, other I, I, like a con- like a console version. Yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah, man, I would. Uh, so man, there's a lot of there, I, and I hear there's a lot of diehard Majora's Mask fan out there who will probably listen to this and go, "That's the best. That's the best Zelda ever." I uh, yeah, and and you get it, but it was. It was difficult for you. Re- reluctantly, I would I would buy a remake, and to me, I'd be like, "Man, I think this is torture." The puzzles are hard, but it's I would I I you guys are gonna I gotta, hate me I gotta, for this for, for myself. I gotta beat it for myself. It's man. my least favorite Zelda game after Legend of Zelda two for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Majora's Mask, I get it. I know it's is the beloved. I know it's beloved by like a hardcore group. But going from Ocarina to Majora's Mask, I get I get it. It was the difficulty level went 
through the roof for Majora's Mask. Because you only got three days to make things right before the moon kills you. Yeah. So every time I played Majora's Mask, after the 72 hours was up, I felt defeated. I felt like I can't beat this game. Even though you know you're getting a fresh new 32 hour or or whatever it is, 72. I always felt defeated. Now, me as a gamer, I always felt like I'm not making any progress, even though I was. Yep. Even though you you 100% are making progress. The people that, that will claim Majora's Mask as their number one Zelda game, they understand what that feeling where they're progressing, and I didn't get that at the yeah. time. That's a good pick, man. That was your number one, number five, right? That was uh four. Yeah, yeah. Five. Well, not the honorable mention. So yeah. yeah, that's your number. Your five. Uh, that's your first pick. Um, no, my. Uh huh. No, so so Edge was my first pick. You are right. <laughs> so and that's my, number four. And F Zero is my first. Yep. All right. So my next one, which is my number four pick, is Dark Souls. Now this came out on PS Four. It came out on PS3, whatever, what on, on the last two gens of system. Dark Souls, I tried to play it. Let me tell you how hard this game was, Chris. Everybody was like, hey, man, this is a 2011 action role-playing game. And I said, oh, so it's Zelda, right? A, an action role-playing game in the 2010s. <laughs> and then I, I played it. Yeah. So I I paid hard earned I paid hard earned money to play Dark Souls, and I know that the sequels are even worse. Yep. <laughs> I got my ass handed to me so many times right at the very beginning. Was it fun? No, <laughs> no, it's not fun. Yep. Man, you gotta be a masochist. You gotta like getting your ass handed to you. By the the minimalist boss, the minimalist. If you don't know how to dodge in that game, Cyclone, Cyclone 07. I know you've played a few of these. If you don't know how to dodge in these games, I don't know how you do it, bro. I don't know how you do it. Dark Souls, and here's a kicker, man. Dark Souls got remastered. Yep. And and here's. My dumbass. I was like, maybe if I buy the remaster, it'll be different. You bought you bought the remaster? <laughs> it wasn't. It was just the remaster with a new skin on it. Nah. <laughs> it was Dark no. Souls with a new skin on it. So one thing for me, you I'm not gonna pay anybody <laughs> to scare me. Or I'm not no, gonna it's pay not any- scary. It's not scary. Or I'm it's not, not gonna scary. pay anyone to whoop my ass. So I'm not that that is what it is. For me, that's how I'm not doing that. <laughs> but I'm not doing yo, that. you are paying sixty dollars. No, I'm not doing that. No. To somebody to beat you and make you feel like you are really bad at video games. And that is Dark Souls. And God bless everyone out there who is really good at the game. I am not that guy. I'm hey, you know that meme that says you're not that guy? You're not that guy, pal. I'm not that guy, pal. I'm not that guy. That's Dark Souls. All right. What's your next pick? All right, man. Number three, man. I got to take it back to Sega. Um, Altered Beast. Great pick. Power Up. <laughs> Power Up. Yo. <laughs> I think I only got to... I think the farthest level I ever got to was like a fiery, volcano lava-ish type level. Okay. But like... I only got there once. And um the game was just hard. Yeah, it was hard. Like it was it was hard to keep your power ups. Like for me, getting to getting from the first stage to the second stage mm-hmm. with your werewolf power. Which is badass when you finally got it. With, with your werewolf power, it was like, I right, I'm good. Yep. You thought you were good. And then you get to the next level. And to be able to make it out the second level, not even skinny, but like if you were just semi diesel, <laughs> you're skinny. If you were semi diesel, 
Look up Altered Beast, boys. And there's gonna be there's gonna be footage. If you if you were semi diesel leaving the second stage for me, you thought you were good, right? I was like, all right, I'm. It's progress. It is progress. That third level. No, I think Hard. I think you turned to a a bad like a or something. It was like a dragon. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was it was something weird, but I I didn't get past that. Man, but. So here's the thing. I got Dif passed it once with my cousin. Difficulty aside, Alter Beast was a launch title for the Sega Genesis in like '89, and it was an arcade hit. Um, I remember what was cool about it when I was a kid was like you can understand power up, yeah, and reach. I'm, you guys are gonna cool. kill me for this. Return from your grave. I'm. Yep. Not, I know that's not. Rise. It was rise. rise from your grave. Yep. Rise from your grave. Yep. The audio. <laughs> we ain't had it. You guys don't understand how far we've come in gaming. But in 1989, rise from your grave was a big deal. Oh, it was a big deal. It was a big deal. I understood. And seeing your character level up on a on a on a level different from Super Mario. Altered Beast was a pack-in title before Sonic was. Yeah, before Sonic. It was yeah, Altered Sonic. Beast. It, Sega was at the very early stages on the Alex Genesis. Kid, I think was probably. It, it was. It was Altered Beast on a Genesis. Yeah. So I like that game. Hard. Is it hard? Yes, it is hard. Um, I like your pick, man. That was that was a good pick. Um, here comes here comes a a flash from the past. You guys ready for this pick? Battle Toads. Oh, that was fucking hard too. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I, I, wow. I oh those my numbers. god. Yeah. One oh, of wow. the earliest rare games on the NES. Battle Toads, man. And here's the thing about the list that we're coming up with. It's not that these games are bad. These are games that we played as kids that we liked regardless if they were hard or not. Um, Battle Toads for me, I didn't make it very far in that game. But and in, in an era where we had Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Biker Mar Biker Mice from Mars, and uh, other things of that nature, we had the Battle Toads on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Battle Toads was so difficult. I remember getting all the way to the sledge stage or sled stage. And never making it past that because it's so hard. But it's one of those games that we look at fondly and we think about, man, what did we like as kids? Battletoads was up there. If they would have had a Battletoads action figure line when those games came out, I would have been all over the Battletoads action figures. Um, they missed they an missed opportunity with that. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was gigantic battle toads with a with the action figure line yeah could have been just as big yeah. as tmnt no that's true i agree so that's my pick my my next pick battle toads we're gonna go with number two or three for you um three one, right three one two three so this is number two okay yeah you're right. Everybody look left. Everybody look right. Everywhere game. you look there in the spotlight. Oh, I just can't wait to be king. Yo, the Ooh, Lion King. The Lion King. Um, Hard. The... I don't know if it's the second level or the third. But Sega Genesis? That's, the what, Sega that's where Gen I played it. This, uh, I believe it's the Sega Genesis. Hard. What I know is when you got to jump on the giraffe's head. Hard. I, if That's if, the I can't wait to be king level. That level. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one where they're playing that. The, the music trauma. we all love. The trauma. The trauma is when I hear that song. You knew it was on. And it's just like, oh my god, bro! It's like that's when Disney was cooking. Disney, what Aladdin? 
Um, the Mermaid, Lion King, Beauty and the Beast. They were uh, cooking movies. And games Hercules. As well. The games, the games that they were dropping at that time. Yeah. Uh the uh, uh what was the other one? Uh Rescue Rangers, Darkwing Duck. They had uh the the what was the one with the other ducks? <laughs> DuckTales. DuckTales. All of those games were amazing. Um Capcom. Yo, Lion Lion King. Your pick last week. I I, I could not remember. Capcom. Lion King was I maybe, difficult. So if, if Aladdin with Altered Beast, if I beat the second stage, man, but Lion King maybe was five dope. times that I could remember, mm-hmm. I could only remember only ever beating that that stage of the Lion King. The Lion King giraffe level is ingrained yeah. in my brain. I don't know what happens after that. Me neither. I don't know what happens. I think after I know that. what happens because I probably I've visited seen, maybe once or twice. Now I've seen but. videos of other people playing past that level, and this is gonna go with my next couple of picks. But What's it was that? so difficult. It was so difficult. Um, but with that said, Capcom with the animation, the Lion King games. Yeah. were on point yeah i love those games the and i know they good. All yeah that was good yeah 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 i'm okay with them being super hard because at the time we were we were at an age where dumping quarters into the arcade was still a thing so they capcom and everybody wanted you to pump quarters into the machines so when those games ported over to consoles they were always more difficult because Hell, here, all you got to do is continue, right? And they wanted you to get their best out of your 60 oh, bucks man. and go look up the inflation rate from 1994 to where we are now in 2024. What is the inflation rate of $60 or $50 back then to now? You're paying over 100 bucks a game. Um, Lion King, man, that that's was, a good one. That was, that was, it was, it was hard, man. It's, I'm, I'm still traumatized. I'm still traumatized by the next pick as well. You ready for this one? What's that? And we mentioned it last time. Super Mario Brothers, The Lost Levels. Oh, and yeah. Okay, I could see that. When we found out that Super Mario Brothers had a part two in Japan, and it wasn't Super Mario Brothers 2 here in the U.S., that there was a real SMB 2. And we just rebranded it as The Lost Levels. Japan didn't release this game originally in the United States because they figured this game is too difficult for North Americans. So what did they they do? They waited until 1990, 1996 or something around those lines or maybe for that. For, okay, 1993 according to this article. For them to release it on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System as part of Super Mario Brothers All Stars. This is the real Mario Brothers 2. Yep. The one they got in Japan. The one we got here in the United States is called Doki Doki Panic, and they just reskinned it. I remember playing this game for the first time as All Stars, as the Lost Levels, and I never beat it. I never beat it as a kid. I never went back and revisited it as an adult. It's something I probably should do now. I never beat Mario Brothers The Lost Levels, which is the true Mario Brothers 2. Why? It was too hard for American audiences. <laughs> <laughs> they were right. They were right. This game was very, very difficult, and Nintendo of America chose wisely in skipping this one and reskinning Doki Doki Panic. Um, that is my last pick. My number two. You have an honorable mention? Yeah. Honorable mention for me is, is it's going to be a, another callback to the Genesis. And it's a callback to me not knowing what I was doing. <laughs> So I'm gonna say the same thing for my honorable mention. 
<laughs> so my honorable mention is Toe Jam and Earl. Ah, I don't know what. I, to this day, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I just knew that it was it was for People that love time. It. it was open world. People and love it. I remember walking around and just not knowing what to do, not knowing what I'm doing, but progressing. And then you get a boss fight, and then it's just like. What the what hell? What am I doing? Yeah. Oh, there's a boss fight. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and right, but told Jim and Earl, and and I kind of want to give my honorable mention. It's like a split because yeah. Earthworm Jim was the same, was the next one as well. Well, Earthworm Jim was okay. It, it was, I get it. Earthworm it Jim was hard, was, but. It was the. It was more. It was more of a. It was of more a traditional. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can but, make your way through it. But um. Uh, but I see your toe jam and Earl. Yeah, that's a good genesis Earl pick. Was just like I was. I just never got it. I never got it, but I always played the sequel to I, two and three. I wanted to get it. <laughs> I wanted to get it. It was one of those games I wanted to get, and at the time, cool music for sixteen bit era. Mm -hmm. It was one of those games where you like you felt like you should have loved it more than as a kid. I didn't get it, so I'm with you on that one. That's a yeah. Good one. I wish if if correct me if I'm wrong, but if they were to bring it back, yeah, um, I, I would think definitely. It, I, it could. There's been. a new one. There's a new one recently. I don't know how good it is. Okay. Um, I think you're gonna agree with this next honorable pick. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by Konami. On the original NES. Oh, the one when you got to go through the sewers and come back up into the overworld or whatever? I don't got to say more than that. Oh, there's an underwater level that most people didn't get through. Um, yeah. And you, you, you got to... <laughs> so here's the thing about TMNT. Now that we're older, I've seen videos where people have gone through and they say, hey, Here's the thing about him. It's like Mega Man. Certain turtles are made for certain levels. Okay. So if you want to beat X level with Donnie, Mikey, or Leo, or Raph, this is the level you're supposed to pick them on. So this was like one of the first games where... The, like Mega Man. The developers were like, no, you're just playing it wrong, stupid. You're just playing it wrong. And as a kid, you didn't know you were playing it. You want to play with your favorite? Yeah, because I mean, I used to play with Donatello. Just play with Raphael, who's because he had the best. He had the best. He had the best reach. Yeah, makes but sense. but Donnie's not the best in every level. Nope. Mikey's the best in some. Leo's the best in others, and Raph is the best in others. I didn't know that as a child. No. So what would I do? I used to burn. Through all the turtles, Raph has the the worst reach. So I'm gonna pick Raph first and get demolished in every level. And Raph, that's my guy. Pause. Okay. Yeah, but he had the size in that game, in that one game. He was bad in that one game because he had, or so I thought. Now, as an adult, I go back and I watch people like. YouTubing and and beating those games and they're like this is the level where you pick Raph and Raph is the beast in that level. Yeah. I didn't know that as a child. So a part of the reason why I don't go back and watch those because I want to I want to beat it myself. Um not saying that there's anything wrong with that. You're never going back at this point, Chris. I I'm I'm not I don't I don't want to say you're you're almost 40. No, nah, I don't want to say there's nothing wrong, but like you're never going back. Can I tell you something? Sure. The first time that I ever beat Mario 3 was in my mid-20s. Yeah, that's 20 years ago. Or 10 years ago. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Maybe maybe you'll go back and beat TMNT. I highly doubt it, but maybe. Um, um, I just know that it's one of the hardest games I played as a kid. It is one of the hardest games that if you didn't know that there was a pattern to it and that you certain levels beat by certain turtles and there was nothing like in the manual that said that crap. You know what I'm saying? You just had to guess. Now we know as adults, people have figured it out. That's my honorable mention. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by Konami. Hard as a child. Very, my personal, uh, 
number two honorable mention. And the only reason it's honorable is because we figured out there's a pattern. Um. Okay, so number one for me, the hardest game that I remember playing, Um. and again, it's... The list is subjective, but yeah, for yeah. me, I'm going back to my childhood. Of course. Um, so for me, it's going to be the X-Men game on the <laughs> Sega Genesis. I got my ass kicked by that so many times. Um, that game, like, I remember, like, the X-Men cartoon was hot. Mm-hmm. And I remember I bought the X-Men game, and I had it. And um, you get a whole list of characters to play with. I don't know how many it was, but it was a lot. Yeah, what a lot. I, what I was expecting was X-Men, the arcade game. It wasn't but when that. I got something was different. <laughs> so now the first level or the first two, I remember it being grassy and whatever. And I remember picking Nightcrawler and I would teleport my way through the level and um thinking you had it made. And I I was thinking I was good. And then I got to a second level, I believe. Now I, my memory could be you know a little messed Fuzzy. up because this is 30 years ago. Right. I might be 37 and you know, next yeah, month. Yeah, you was a kid. So um <laughs> what really got me is uh I would luckily make my way through the first level or the first zone. Right. However, it's however it is with Nightcrawler. Um, but I just know the furthest I ever got, it was on a spaceship, which could be the second level. Right. Or the second zone. But I just don't know. You never made it past. Zone two or round yeah, two, I never made it the past second zone two. level because it was so difficult and and it was it was so hard, difficult. It was so difficult. We know now as adults why it was so difficult. It was cheap. You would get, you would get shots coming at you from out of you the get, yeah out of the level. Beam. It'd be a laser <laughs> beam coming from nowhere, and then and you got to duck and dodge or whatever. Um. So, so that's what made. That's what really, like, it really pissed me. You didn't know what was coming. So I always impossible. I always so like my Sega was the first ever Sega. My my Sega was the first ever console that I loved and hated because it would cheat. And I thought it was cheating me because it was was, cheating. It was. Man, listen. You can feel um, justified now as an adult to know your X Men game was one thousand percent cheating on. It was it was a laser off of an off screen character that you couldn't see yes. shooting at you. It was it was it was super bad. It was bad. And um, but we loved it at the time because we knew X Men were cool. Yeah. And and what better way to play an X Men game than an X Men game? And I'm sorry because I'm gonna just put this in there. Yeah. Because. <laughs> Told you, my Earl was 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 crazy for me because I understand what was going on. But at that time in the nineties, when you got the X Men and everything is cool, and you just want to play a game and have fun, that game wasn't it. No. And there was another game that came out after that that gave me the same feeling, feeling? of X Men. There's so many, but it was hard. It was, but the, it was that it was, was the legit, era. It was legit hard. But that was the era of that. We were in the NES, SNES, Genesis era of hard Spider-Man and Venom vs. Carnage. There were so many. There were so many. And I had a Spider-Man game on the, 60, on the so Genesis. He's, he's got two hard. number ones, oh but God, I don't disagree with him. I don't disagree with him. Oh my God. I got one for you that's gonna you're probably going to agree with. And and a lot of people out there are going to. And here's, here's what I'm going to say about this, this number one pick. It is going to be. Hey, pick which one you want. Do you want the modern version or do you want the NES version? Ninja Gaiden. Ninja Gaiden was so difficult in the NES. And then and then they decided to, hey, we're going to make a Ninja Gaiden for Xbox. We're going to make Ninja Gaiden for Wii U. We're going to make Ninja Gaiden for all the... Guess what? The, guess what's gonna happen with all those games? They're gonna be 
so difficult that you're gonna want to throw your controllers. You're gonna want to throw your Xbox, your PlayStation, your Wii U. Third Strike. What Ninja Gaiden? Ninja Gaiden Third Strike was supposed to be the easiest version of the Ninja Gaidens. I play, Chris. I played that one. Yo, so you say Ninja Gaiden, and I'm getting trauma from Shinobi. And Shinobi was easy, man. Uh, easy to you. I, exactly. <laughs> when you play, when you play either one of those. Shinobi, Shinobi is considerably, <laughs> and this is not saying Shinobi is easy. Shinobi is considerably easier than Ninja Gaiden. So we got Tecmo. We Tecmo in the top ten because now I'm. Just... Tecmo has decided that they wanted to make a game that's going to make you want to throw your controller yeah. across the across the room. And here's the here's the beauty about Ninja Gaiden versus what he just mentioned. Now, X Men is difficult because there's poor design changes. Ninja Gaiden is bad. It's difficult because you're bad at the game. Ninja Gaiden is bad because I suck. Because I didn't realize that 2.5 seconds earlier, this guy was gonna throw. A ninja star and because it's me being an idiot and going oh well i should have known that's why ninja gaiden is bad because i can't memorize everything in the game now it's not poorly designed because if you do memorize everything i've seen people speed run the game and make it <laughs> yeah, the speed and, runners. yeah and you make the it look, so, make look, good. look easy so hey guys what are you what are your top five hardest games? And we can revisit this because I got a, a I got list more games popping up, and it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. so many, it's so many. If you grew up during the what NES, is it Metal Slug, and uh, that was on Neo Geo. So if you if you go back on the on the sixteen bit and eight bit sixteen bit era, and even some thirty two bit era games, if you go back, it was difficult. It was hard to be a gamer. So we were still in that arcade period where they want to pump quarters out of you. But hey guys, leave your five favorite difficult games. Cause it these not saying these games were bad. They were just no. hard. They were just hard. I still had a really good time. That X-Men game he just said, I, I don't know. I maybe I dumped thirty hours into making it past level two. Yeah, I, I put a I put a lot of hours in that game. Yeah, a lot. It, it's hard. So I'm sorry just to bring this back up, but like folks, you know, in my family, I was the, the gamer guy. Um, yeah. everyone came to my house to spend a night to play the collection of games that I had. And one of the games that everyone wanted to play was that X Men game. It was X Men, and I was just like, uh, "It gets hard." We could play something else, man. But like, <laughs> I'm not gonna get far. I'm a good host, so it's like we could play this. And then you know, once they start dying, and they go, "Well, how do you beat it?" And I go, "I don't oh, know. No, Even I can't is, beat it." This is why I don't <laughs> play it. Like this is this. This game just be cheating. <laughs> exactly. This game is bad. <laughs> this game is poorly designed, guys. And, we, uh, but we didn't know that back in the nineties. We didn't know it was this hard. And I had uh I had one cousin <laughs> I had one cousin we was playing, we was playing a game with, and we got yeah. as far as we got, and we got far. <laughs> like I seen Levels and zones that I've never he was, seen again to my. He was my particularly life. good at this one game, and um, he was autistic. And, <laughs> Go uh, ask your cousin if he's aut autism. And um, <laughs> I mean, shit, he might. He might. <laughs> and we got that far, and we lost. And even though we lost, I was still like, "Yo, I." You that was amazing. That was see amazing. It. I seen levels I never seen. Yeah, yeah, man. I you mean, got through the first two, three zones with 
ease easily no and I was, like, you were looking at like whoa yeah. what are these levels yeah, yeah yeah i mean that's that's a level that we you know we can't we really, as regular gamers it's hard to get to there so guys leave your best five hardest games what are your hardest games of all time leave five in the comments below i mean as always we want to thank you guys for being here every week with us we're the drunken idiots. We talk about video yeah, games. Yeah, we stupid drunk today. Music, media, movies. Uh, go check out our movies playlist and and uh, yeah, man. You, so all right, so boom. If you like classic movies, that's where they are. I'm gonna be honest. I'm a um, it's a it's a fruit fly here. I'm sorry. So um, I'm gonna be <laughs> honest with you guys. So we really appreciate all the likes, all right. the subscribes. We love that. Um, what would really help us out right now is uh. The time that is being watched on um, on our videos. So we know that you like lists and we're going to try to accommodate. We're going to try to do all of that. But right. if you're a person that's like me who needs uh, background noise on the TV or to go to sleep or, you know, if you're at, if you're at work and you just want something playing in the background so you don't got to hear what Sally is doing. Absolutely. Then, um, please. Check out one of our movies. Yes, check out one of our movies and uh, just 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 let it play. Hey man, we got we got we got some classics on there, and I'm looking to add more. And there's gonna be a playlist available for all of you. Um, I'm trying not to add every uh, you know random movie that I can. I'm trying to add some that that are considerably good classics. So, yeah, so is there's there's an intent to it. There's an intent to it. So as always. <laughs> Just check out our playlist. Uh, hit that like, subscribe, yes. share. But more importantly, guys, leave a comment below. Let us know what your top five hardest games of all time are. And we are definitely interested in that. And, hey, we will include that in our next week's. Um, you know, if you guys want to leave your comment, we'll include it in our next week's video to say what your hardest uh, five weeks and again as always we are the drunken idiots my name is anthony aka good wa avenger along with chris aka talents a60 on playstation uwa talents on nintendo platform uh, everything except for i think youtube is like uwa talents one go check them out and as always thank you guys for being here every week and we are the drunken idiots and we are out